Ada poin tepat. Mai, tren sepat.
with his word, disturb the silence of our unbelief, that in the face of life's uncertainties, we may find confidence in you, and that in every endeavor that we take, we may believe in your goodness, our friends and our home. May his word disturb the silence of our anguish and despair, that amidst conflicts and strife among ourselves, groups and nations, we may find a path to sustainable peace, and that, with a seemingly dim tomorrow that awaits our world, we may engender in each other the hope that this world can get better. May his bird disturb the silence of our hardened hearts, that despite our shortcomings and failures, we may find more reasons to be patient and understanding, and that no matter how much pain we have caused others, love may lead us back to forgiveness. O oh God, disturb us, make us question our walk and talk, interrupt the comfort of ourselves and break us, so that in your silence we may mature and be true in faith, be fair and sensitive in hope, and hold and unsparing in love, especially to the poor. This, O quiet God, we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and we will pray for our God. Mary, seed of wisdom, pray for us. Send the word, O the Apostles, in the Church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This will be sad. Trinity in the womb of 
the Virgin Mary. In fact, this is our Gospel reading for today. The Annunciation story from the Gospel of Luke. It happened right when Mary said, Fiat mihi secundum verbum tuo. In the Gospel of John, we read, And the Word was made flesh. A concise account of the mystery of the Incarnation. From our human recording, we ask, How is this possible? How does the divine be united to the human? Or the human be united to the divine? In this debate, let us be open, let us listen, let us learn, and let us go deeper in the understanding not only of the mystery of the Incarnation, but in the understanding of the God who loves us so much as to send us His only begotten Son. And so welcome, everyone. To tell us about what will happen in today's activity, the positions to be defended and the philosophers who will be defending these positions, may I call on Dr. Mark Anthony Becena, Associate Professor and Lecturer, and Undergraduate Coordinator at Venice University. Vice Dean for 
External Affairs, De La Salle University, and the current PEP President uh, from De La Salle University, Dr. Jeremiah Ben Joaquin. Debate rules. Okay, so the first part would be uh, context building. So we're, we're using a modified version of the uh, Oxford uh, debate format. So the first part is context building. I will interview both uh, panelists and establish context. And then the first speaker for Dr. Joaquin will present his argument for the pro proposition for seven minutes. Someone will do time. Uh, oh, I want to recognize also officers from of, uh, PAP, uh, Mike Hernandez, <laughs> and Dr. Uh, Isabel, also the chair of the philosophy department, the LSM. And then after that, the first speaker for the opposition, the, the opposition speaker will present his argument for the negotiation. Uh, for, sorry, for the negation of the proposition. And then we proceed to debate from the floor. For 15 minutes, the audience will have an opportunity to join in the debate by asking questions directly to either one of them. Each audience member would be given a minute for his or her question. I will moderate this as well. The interlocutors can choose to answer or not the ans uh, to answer the question, please. And then the second speaker for pro. So we'll... Uh, we will pick uh, an audience, uh, one audience member for pro and one audience member for uh, for con, you know, to serve as the second speaker uh, on each side. So the second speaker for pro will present a closing statement for the proposition. So the, the objective of the second speaker is to close, and then the second speaker for the opposition will present their closing statement. Each will be given three minutes. Then you have the rebuttal form. Uh, but apart for 10 minutes, the, the first speaker for pro and opposition will engage in interpretation of each other's arguments. The opposition will be first. Uh, the last is the post debate. For 10 minutes, you, the audience, will be given time to deliberate on the arguments. So you guys function like a jury. So you will be given time, 10 minutes, to cast your votes by taking a seat in the position that you think is right. So this is your initial. Uh, seating arrangement. And then after that, you will deliberate. And then, uh, if you were convinced, uh, for instance, if audience members sitting here convinced in the, uh, the pro side, then you have to change seats. Alright, and then I will count uh, how many seated here, how many seated there, and then I will declare who the winner is. Alright? Okay, so first, before we uh, build context, uh, you wanna, you wanna pick? Okay, Dr. Calano, can you pick your second speaker from this side? Or any volunteer? Anyone who wants to volunteer as a second speaker? Dapat daw seminar. Okay, any seminarian who wants to volunteer? Anyone? Uh, Nico, can you volunteer someone? <laughs> Second speaker. MJ, okay, MJ is your second speaker. <laughs> <laughs> How about from this side, the con side? Anyone who wants to volunteer? Raymond. 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 Who's Raymond? Raymond. 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 That's a pro. Raymond. Pro si Kuya Glenn. 
So I really encourage you to pay attention. Okay, just, just to briefly sum up, these are the three uh, propositions. Jesus Christ is truly divine. Jesus Christ is truly human. And Jesus Christ is a single individual identical to God, the Son. Uh, those three propositions. Okay, we're in agreement? Yes. Okay, all right. Now let's define uh, philosophically sound. Uh, Dr. Rufin, start. Actually, the best task for to be Dr. Galano. So we're thinking about philosophical soundness in terms of certain characteristics <laughs> of belief. So it's a normative claim about certain sorts of belief. For a belief to be sound, it must at least be true, right? at least be coherent, and be justified. So the evidence, comes, whatever that evidence may be, it must be true, and it has to be coherent. Dr. Galanda, do you have said? Ang esensya ng Diyos. 
At kahit na sinabi na niya sa artikulo 12 na ang ating natural na isip ay may kaalamang tumutukoy sa Diyos, malinaw din niyang sabi na ang mga kaalamang ito ay hindi nangangahulugan na naunawain na natin ang esensya ng Diyos. Kung ganun, imposibleng makita at mangunawaan natin ang esensya ng Diyos sa buhay na ito sa material na daigdi. Ano ang dahilan? Malawak ang paliwanag na ibinigay niya. Ngunit ayon sa kanya, may kaalaman na naganap kung ang bagay na alam ay umiiral sa may alam. Ibig sabihin, kung ituturing lamang natin ang persona ni Kristo bilang objeto ng ating kaalaman, nilalagay natin siya at pinap Inaalis natin sa Kanya ang Kanyang pagkatao at itinuturing natin siya bilang obheto ng pagkaalam. At bilang obheto ng pagkaalam, siya ay nawawala ng pagkatao. At sa Kanyang kadahilanan, nawawala rin ang Kanyang pagkatos. Ang isang bagay ay alam ayon sa tunay nitong pag-iral sa labas ng isip. Kung ito ay alam sa pamamagitan ng isang katulad, similitudo, na angkop sa bagay mismo, nawawalan din mismo ang pagka-Diyos ng Diyos. Ibig sabihin, kung ang pamamaraan natin ng pagunawa sa Diyos ay gamit ang kaisipan ng tao, ibig sabihin, gaya rin ang kakayahan sa gipin ng isip ng tao, nagiging obheto rin ang Diyos. Ang pag-alam ng alimang ni kakayahan kumalam ay ayon sa uri ng pag nito. Kung ang uri ng pag ng bagay na aalamin ay lampas sa uri ng pag ng umaalam, ang kaalaman ng bagay na iyon ay lampas sa likas na kakayahan ng umaalam. Ibig sabihin, kung ang pamamaraan ng pag natin sa pagkatao at pagsasang tao ng Diyos ay bilang tao lamang, hindi talaga natin nasasakit ang kanyang pagka-Diyos. At sa ganyang pamamaraan, tayo kumikiling lamang sa isang natura at isinasantabi ang isa pang natura at yan ang banal na natura. Ang esensya ng Diyos ay hindi maaaring maging obheto ng kaalaman ng isip niya at ang sarili niyang pagmemeron. Ibig sabihin, kapag pinag-usapan na natin ang misteryo ni Jesus at ng kanyang pagkatao, hindi ito maaaring pag-usapan gamit lamang ang ating mga natural na logika sapagkat binawasak ng misteryo ito ang ating kakayahang umisip lamang sa pamamagitan ng logika. Ibig din sabihin na kapag ipipilit natin ang misteryo ito gamit ang kakayahan ng isip ng tao, inaalis natin ang kanyang pagkatos at iniintindi lamang natin siya bilang obyeto ng kaalaman. At dahil riyan, hindi talaga natin tunay at lubusang naintindihan ang kanyang pagkatao. Doon sa pagkukunawang yun, kung nais intindihin kung paano nga ba nagkaroon ng dalawang likas. At ang aking mungkay ay kinakailangang intindihin natin na ang konteksto ng posibilidad at imposibilidad ay nananahan lamang sa tao sapagkat ang ating material na kalagayan ay laging nakakulong na sa kung ano ang posible sa atin. Ngunit hindi ganyan ang logika ng Diyos. Kaya nga teologikal ang pag-uunawa ng inkarnasyon. Ibig sabihin, logika ng Diyos at hindi logika ng tao ang magiging batayan sa pag-uunawa ng Diyos. At sa ganyang pag-uunawa, sa harap ng lubos at na posibilidad na walang kondisyon, lamang natin maintindihan kung anong ibig sabihin ng Diyos na ganap na nagpakita. You can proceed. So, ang kaalaman ng esensya ng Diyos na ito ay hindi ay maaari lamang nating matamo sa tinatawag na siyensya yata o ang mismong pagharap at pagmalas ng mga pinagpala ng Diyos. Sa karanasan ito, ang mismong esensya ng Diyos ang nakikita ng isip ng mga pinagpala. Ngunit gaya ng nakita na natin, hindi kaya ng likas na kakayahan ng isip na makita ang esensya na ito. Kaya kinakailangan palakasin ang isip ng tao sa pamamagitan ng grasya ng Diyos upang maging sapat ang kakayahan nitong unawain ang walang hanggang esensya ng pagkatao ng Diyos. 
Itong karagdagang lakas para sa kakayahan ng isip ay tinatawag nating iluminatsyo. Gag gayon pa man, ang karanasan ng siyensya biyata na kabilang sa kabilang buhay ay hindi na nangangulugan ng lubusan at ganap na pagunawa sa esensya ng Diyos. Ang Diyos lamang ang may kakayahang unawain ng lubusan ang kanyang walang hanggang esensya. Diyan, sa puntong yan, sa pag-uunawang yan, maaaring lapitan o kumagat man lang sa pagsasakatawang tao ng Diyos. Maraming salamat, Dr. Galano. Uh, Dr. Joaquin. Let me know when you're ready. Time starts okay. Time starts now. Okay. Friends in philosophy, let us thank our friend from California for offering a really interesting argument for the proposition. That actually, the proposition is in an entirely crisis philosophically summon to define him or to defend him. To defend him, actually, that we can only know God through divine revelation or through divine. Now, let me offer my argument for the same conversation. Against the contrary position of the incarnate crisis philosophically and sound. So I'm sticking with the issue. So the basic argument is simple. A philosophically sound belief is at least coherent. Contradictory beliefs are incoherent. Hence, contradictory beliefs are philosophically unsound. Now, the belief in an incarnate Christ implies contradiction. So therefore, belief in an incarnate Christ is philosophically unsound. So that's the basic argument. So why should we accept the premise that philosophically sound beliefs are at least coherent? Well, I'll give you a reductional argument. Now suppose that some philosophically sound belief is incoherent. Suppose that male vixens exist or that there is a greatest national number. Suppose that they are philosophically sound. Now, sure, these beliefs are not philosophical sound. Since there are no real vixens, because vixens are female foxes, and there cannot be a greatest national number. For, as we all know, national numbers are infinite. So, philosophical soundness implies coherence. That's the uh, first premise. Now, this reduction relies on un undefined notion of coherence, which I'll cash out in terms of truth and credence or not necessarily confidence. These are really the next definitions. So, let's define coherence of beliefs in terms of truth. Now, this implies that there is at least one possible scenario where a belief turns out to be. So, suppose that we're talking about talking donkeys. Uh, talking donkeys exist. Now, that's a coherent belief because we can think of a scenario where there are talking donkeys. Imagine Shrek. Shrek, So in that scenario, there's at least one talking dog. On the other hand, there are male fixes. That's incoherent, since there's no possible scenario that female foxes are males. On the other hand, we define beliefs in terms of the coherence of beliefs in terms of confidence, or in degrees of confidence that we apply to a given belief. Suppose that we're talking about flying pigs, existing by pigs, then it's coherent because however improbable that may be, we could still assign a positive non-zero probability. So I'm thinking about treatments in terms of probabilities. Conversely, the belief that there is a greatest national number is incoherent since given what we know about national numbers, uh, there is simply no chance that there will be a greatest natural number. Now, so cashing out coherence of beliefs in terms of truth and treatments, which are epistemic notions, uh, will be used in building up the, the argument for the philosophical unsoundness of the incarnate Christ. So let's see that. So contradictory beliefs are incoherent. Why? Well, I'll give you two arguments for that. Now, each one corresponds to the truth notion and the notion of coherence. But before that, let's define what contradictory beliefs are. A contradictory belief implies that something is and is not the case. Alternatively, it implies that something has and does not have the same property or certain property. So to hold that it is raining and not raining here now, and to assert that a car is both blue and not blue, is contradictory. Why? Why is it contradictory? Because you're asserting something and denying it at the same time. 
Now, why is such a belief incoherent? Well, the belief of contradictory statement implies that the belief cannot be true or the belief cannot be assigned a positive probability. So suppose we have a contradictory statement like it's raining and not raining here now, and this is coherent, then there is a possible scenario where it is raining and not raining here at the same time. Now obviously we can't have that scenario, so the belief that, there, that it is raining and not raining is true. Alternatively, if we have a belief that it is raining and not raining here now, it is, if this is coherent, we can assign a probability, a positive, positive probability to that belief. However, we can't assign such probability uh, assignment because there's simply no chance that it is both raining and not raining here now. So, contradictory statements are incoherent. Uh, now, given this characterization of incoherence and contradiction, what does it imply about our belief about the interference? Well, I'll say the Christian doctrine implies a contradiction. Why? Well, because to believe that Christ is both truly divine and truly human implies that Christ is fully human and fully divine. That is, if Christ is fully human, then he has all the essential properties of human beings, and this includes being readable, infinite, fallible, and so on and so forth. If Christ is fully divine, on the other hand, he also has all the properties of the divine, that is, uh, being immutable, infinite, infallible. So, prima facie, the belief that Christ is both human and divine um, seems reasonable, but it implies a contradiction. Let's see the contradiction. If Christ is human, then he is fallible, by definition. If Christ is divine, then he is infallible, if Christ, uh, so since Christ is both human and divine, Christ is both fallible and infallible. That's a contradiction, and given the argument, it's philosophically unsound because it's a new coherent belief. Now, so what would my dear friend from Kanimunan reply or say about this? He might say, one, coherence requirement is not a requirement for philosophical terms. Well, if this is the option that he'll go to, he has the burden to show that coherence is not necessary for concepts. On the other hand, he might accept coherence, but he'll define it in some other way, not in terms of truth or credence. But again, if this is his view, then he has to argue for it as well. Third, he might qualify the doctrine of uh, incarnation. So, uh, then divine lang si Christ in terms of some kind of qualified respect, or human lang si Christ in some sort of qualified respect. But again, we could uh, generate another kind of paradox for this. Last, finally, he might just wave his hand, like he's doing with Kalina, and say that our should only be accepted as a matter of faith, divine revelation. Now, if this is his move, then I could raise my hand as well. Okay, thank and you. say good luck. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, uh, can I invite both speakers uh, in front? Uh, I'm raising a point of clarification. I'll give you 30 seconds before we start the QA. Uh, I'll give uh, 30 seconds for each uh, speaker to clarify their position. Uh, basically, I want to and ask the speaker to explain why he thinks that the belief in the incarnate Christ is philosophically sound. Dr. 30 seconds. The philosophical soundness of the incarnate Christ is actually rooted on the fact that it's a singular argument applicable only to one person and not to any other person. And therefore, any other references to any earthly reality does in fact evade the point. Secondly, if we understand Christ as an object of cognition, then he will only arrive as an object of thought, never of a person. A person reduced to an object can only be understood in terms of its attributes, and these attributes are always already separate from each other, not unified in one person. Thank you, Dr. Kalam. 30 seconds. So I'll just restate my argument. A philosophical sound belief is at least coherent, a contradictory belief is incoherent. Belief in an incarnate Christ implies a contradiction, it's contradictory. Hence, belief in an incarnate Christ is philosophical. So that's Thank you, Dr. Rudy. Now we're all uh, round of applause for our speaker. So guys, this is a heavily modified Oxford. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we're seeing it. Oh, I understand Oxford. The audience is given 15 minutes to 
to ask questions. So this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to ask uh, from this side. Uh, we can ask one person uh, to sorry, uh, give an opportunity for one. one. Then next, next. So no follow up questions. Okay. So 15 minutes start now. Anyone from this side? You can ask a question to any of the speakers. You know what? Cut the time, please. Let's give them five, uh, five minutes uh, to formulate questions. You guys can, cons can consult each other. All right, five minutes.
when whichever side you are on, you can ask question to the pro side. You can ask question from after the con side. Okay, please line up. If you have questions, you can ask questions that would help the speaker clarify his position. Now, good morning, Paul. Uh, we are seminarians from the Dominican Order. So, yung tanong is from the Contra Dictory side. Uh, from the beginning, the Contra Dictory side was stating that uh, incarnation is philosophically unsound. So, does that not come out of saying that incarnate, uh, resurrection is also philosophically unsound because there will be uh, no resurrection without incarnation. And uh, how will you negate that side when we say that uh, historically Christ resurrected from the dead? So thank you. Thank you so much. Let me remind the speakers that we may hope not to answer the question. Yeah, okay, eh, because there's a connection in Tao, supposedly between incarnation and resurrection. Now, I'll be that. I could accept uh, the resurrection idea. Okay? It's been stopping me, sir. There's no contradiction in someone dead person in a world. There's no contradiction. But I'll just deny incarnation. It's been stopping me, sir. It's been stopping me, sir. So uh, I'm saying, yeah, Problema si Resurrection, may patay na ng buhay. Okay. Wala na contradiction na. Okay. For... Ah... Uh, <laughs> Dr. Rocky, for this, for this purpose, can I point of clarification? What do you mean by principle of non-contradiction? So, your principle of non-contradiction is just the idea that here's a statement, okay, if you assert that statement in its negation, like to say that it's raining and not raining, then you have contradicted yourself. So that's a no-no in no, okay, basic question. Which, kalano. And how, how, how does that principle not apply to the next question? Because you can't think of a scenario where in, sorry, we can't think of a scenario where in some dead person comes Okay, alright. Um, question from this side. Because it leads to a contradiction. 
right? So six hundred million. Then if Christ is truly human and divine at the same time, then we're accepting that He's mutable, being human, and immutable, being divine at the same time. That's a contradiction. So I'm denying the philosophical soundness of incarnation because of that. Now I'm affirming resurrection because I don't see a contradiction there. Alright, so I'm defining contradiction in terms of coherence. So I'm going to make a little bit more coherence to it. Can you think of a scenario where a dead person, alright, let's suppose Christ, Jesus Christ, the Matisha, and the Holy Spirit, 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 the Holy Pero, sorry for you, okay? Pero, that's not the uh, issue of concern. Um, so, let's bring it, si Christ, maaari na siya, divine talaga siya, purely divine. Kaya siya, uh, gara-resurrect. Or, purely human siya, tapos na-resurrect. Actually, ano, blasphemy yun? Heresy na pala yan. Huwag no, natin i-accept yan. Yeah, that's a matter of doctrine. Okay? Pero, there's a possible scenario where it, uh, we, God, to merely cognitive terms, always arises a contradiction. 
That's why he basically releases a second name for God in chapter 15. Contrary to our understanding that all that he releases is to my solitary neck with or that which nothing greater can be conceived. O yaong walang nakahihigit na maaaring isipin. But the thing niya doon sa chapter 15, sinabi niya that God is even greater than anything that we conceive. O ko mayus ko ang pagitari posi. O yaong masigit pa sa lahat na maaaring isipin. So, pag titignan mo sa ganyang kalagayan, makikita mo na, oo, oh, kaya isipin ng tao ang Diyos. Kaya nang marating ang isang pag-uunawa ng Diyos. Ngunit hindi ganap ang pag-uunawa ito. At yun lamang yung sinasabi ko. Kaya kung pag-uusapan lamang natin dito ay kung paano nangyari na siya ay isang immutable reality at mutable reality, that's like reducing the entire divine nature to merely two conflicting and contradictory terms. Why at the same time affirming his very nature, which is existence? Thank you, Dr. Kalana. I'm accepting one more question to, for Dr. Kalana. Um, uh, in, in regards to the way she told us about this, uh, sinabi niya po na we cannot know who God is, but we can know what uh, who God is not. So we can have uh, knowledge of God in terms of kung kung sino yung hindi. So one of these, one of the attributes he gave to God is immutable. It's not a positive uh, attribute, but a negative attribute. God is not mutable. And, but human is clearly mutable, changeable to the end. So, it's, there seems to be a What is the question? Uh, the question po is, how could you... I mean, given that uh, St. Thomas Aquinas actually gave uh, a certain knowledge of God, which is a denial of knowledge. And human, human, human clearly is uh, something that is not readable, for instance. Uh, how could you reconcile that? Thank you, Dr. Gadana. We are reminding that you have the option not to answer the question. I will answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, ang mga uri ng pagmimeron na hindi angkop sa Diyos ay makikita natin kung itatakuan natin sa Kanya ang mga komposisyon, pagbabago at iba pa. Kung susuriin natin ang mga kanyang kuwanong angkop sa Kanya ayon kay Santo Tomas, sinabi niya na pinakaunang katangian ng Diyos ay simplicitas dei, kapayakan ng Diyos. At sa kapayakan ito, hindi mahati, maaring hati-hatiin gaya ng ak ginagawa ng aking luntiang kaibigan. Uh, ganun din ang pag-uunawa ng ter perfectioni dei o, o ter bonitate dei o kaya ng katangian ng Diyos bilang uh, deus sin obike. Uh, kailangan intindihin na pati ang immutabilitas dei ay hindi maaaring intindihin bilang bahagi ng isang komposisyon. Walang anumang bahagi o komposisyon ang pagmemeron ng Diyos dahil ang pagmemeron ng Diyos ay ang esensya niya mismo. At yun ang aking sinasabi kanina pa na hindi maaaring itihatiin ang pag-uunawa sa Diyos sapagkat ang gawin ito ay makarat ay para nalamang natin siyang ginawang objeto na pwede natin hiwa-hiwain. At hindi ganon ang esensya daily. Kaya esensya daily ang aking sinimulan. Sapagkat ang pag-unawa ng mga katangian ng Diyos na niwalay sa esensya ito uh, ay nangangulugan lamang ng isang logikal na kontradiksyon. At yun ang dahilan kung bakit hindi ko siya inahal. Kasi kung hahayaan mong intindihin ang pagkatao ng Diyos bilang isang pangungusap o logical statement, gamit lamang yun. Hindi gamit ang pinag-uusapan dito. Persona ang pinag-uusapan dito. At bilang persona, salitang nagkatawang tao, flesh ang gamit na salita sa, sa Biblia, hindi body. And the word was made flesh. Ibig sabihin, nagkaroon ng kaganapan yung pagkatao. Sa salitan at sa katalokan ni, ni, ni St. Luke, sa Gospel of Luke, sa, sa salitan Griego, rima ang ginamit na salita, hindi logos ang ginamit na salita. At pag sinabing rima, 
ibig sabihin kabuuan ng pagkakatawang tao. At yun yung dahilan kung bakit hindi pwedeng hatihin ang Diyos. Sapagkat pag hiniwan-hiwa mo ang Diyos, ginawa mo na hindi na siya simple si Tertili, nawawala yung kanyang pagiging simple. Maraming salamat, Dr. Kalanda. Uh, Pakitaso, uh, raise your hand please if you have any more questions. Raise your hand. Okay, so we're officially closing this portion. Uh, now we're uh, we will give uh, three minutes for the second speaker for pro. Our uh, round of applause for our second speaker. Three minutes to present closing statement for the proposition. MJ. Good morning, everyone. Um, me and my companion have formulated two points for this um, proposition. First one, knowledge of God is difficult to understand by man. As we all know, uh, based on the history of the biblical philosophy, this was already promulgated and proven by St. Augustine and Thomas Aquinas. For it, St. Augustine, for him, it is difficult to understand the nature of God or the divinity and humanity of God because at his experience in the beach wherein he wanted to discover or have a deeper understanding about the Holy Trinity in which St. Augustine himself did not fully understand the nature of God. Second was about St. Thomas Aquinas. St. Thomas Aquinas uh, burned his writings because for him the knowledge of God is difficult to understand. Aside from the biblical philosophers, uh, Ordinary men can also have this um, insight that knowledge of God is difficult to understand. Ordinary men, for us, a uh, seminarian or layman, um, ordinary men can have this uh, glimpse that knowledge of God is really uncomprehendable or difficult to, go, difficult to have grasp and understanding. That's why there are some people who, who, who uh, become atheists or atheists for it because knowledge of God for them are difficult to understand. Atheists deny the existence of God because for them there is no God and they is because there is a God. Second propos propos prop proposition is that divinity and humanity is inseparable. If the divinity and humanity of God is inseparable, therefore it puts contradiction. Why? Because if the nature of God is divine, then we put limits on God based on Christian tradition. Setting limits of God is, be is becoming a contradiction. God cannot become human only because it eliminates the divinity of God. If God is divine only, therefore He is not man. God's nature is inseparable, therefore God is 100% human and 100% divine. Based on the in our philosophy, God is considered a uh, man is considered as a contingent being and is different from necessary being. Man is a contingent being, therefore He is only a human, and God. It's an unnecessary being. Therefore, he can be man and God. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, now, three minutes for Rain. Round of applause for Rain. Good morning, everyone. What to, what Sir have said is that in this proposition, the belief in the incarnate Christ is philosophically sound. It's what he proves unsound because it was incoherent. And what is coherent? Coherence is the, is the belief or the truth that we can think of. Then what he said before is that the donkey, the speaking donkey, you can think of a speaking donkey, like in the Shrek, right? <laughs> And, and in the divinity of in the divinity and humanity of the Christ in the hypostatic union, it's hard to think of the immutability and mutability at the same time in one person, right? Like the corruptibility and incorruptibility or something. So there's a, a, a contradictory belief is incoherent. That's why, hence, a contradictory belief is philosophically unsound. Ayun, parang Tagalog ko na, parang mas malino. 
yung para 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 sabi siya kung philosophically sound, it must be coherent. Eh kaso, yung coherent na yun is hindi ano siya ito pang radik ba? Magtatik ka ano yung mutability and mutability ni Jesus sa incarnate word niya. Kaya, incoherent. And hence, and the belief in the incarnate Christ implies a contradiction. Hence, the belief of the incarnate Christ is philosophically unsolved. That's what. <laughs> Thank you so much. May I invite the uh, first speakers to approach the show. Okay, so I will give uh, for this portion, we will have uh, we'll have 10 minutes for this portion. I reserve the right to extend it if necessary. Okay, so this is the interpolation uh, portion where the speakers will now engage in a battle. So, the opposition will be up first. The opposition will uh, ask questions to the Thank you. 
sapagkat limitado sa katwiran mo, na limitado na rin ang katwiran, sapagkat ang batayan ng katwiran ay ang lex eternalis, ang ratio ng Diyos, hindi ratio ng tao. Magbabado ngayon ang pag-uunawa natin kung ang batayan ay tao. Thank you, Dr. McKean. Dr. Galani, it's your turn. Thank you, Dr. Galani. Naniniwala ka ba? Ay, tinatanggap mo ba yung pag-uunawa na may isang tunay na nila lang uh, at yung nila lang na ito uh, ay ang nagkatawang taong Diyos? Uh, Pakiglanify ka po. Ang point of clarification. Do you believe? Or do you accept the proposition that there is such a thing, or there is someone uh, that is called the incarnate Christ, and that this incarnate Christ is one, it's real, and it's and was, in your understanding, born at least? Uh, no. No, in, in all three. In all three. In all three. So there's no Christ. <laughs> uh, for the sake of debate, there's no incarnate Christ. So there's no incarnate Christ. Yes, bro. So, um, <laughs> point of order. Who is this Jesus that was born? Uh, you anak ni Maria, or in the Bible, Johan and Joseph. Uh, so you believe in the credibility that sacred scriptures provide? Because Not necessarily. Uh, I don't mean like other kind of Because you use it as a basis for proving your point. I entertain the possibility that it's true. Okay. When you say that it's possibly true, uh, does the pos is the possibility sufficient to argue for for the existence of a certain Jesus of Nazareth. It's possible. Okay. But what is the nature of this Jesus of Nazareth? Fully human? Ah, uh, kung pinamanak siya bilang tao, yes. So, fully human. Uh, I want to go in the interpretation. Somebody asked whether this Jesus can possibly resurrect. Huh? No. Uh, how is it possible that somebody who is fully human Basically, resurrect from the dead. Uh, kung ba tayo yung PPA, si Lazarus ba ay but Lazarus never resurrected from the dead. He resuscitated from the dead. Uh, so, resuscitation, resuscitation, and so Let's clarify. So, I have to refrain from asking questions. This is not your information. <laughs> So, we're making a distinction between resuscitation and... Ito, di ba ito sa Bible nakalagay, he has been dead for three days, eh? But he was resuscitated. He died eventually. The resurrected one never died the second time. Ah, so, ito yung resurrection. So, we can't be resurrected as well. No, that's not... Again, warning. Dr. Galano, Mary, I'm not the engaged. Sikat! Sikat! 
right now here as it is an issue of being manifesting divine expression of love, which is a possibility without conditions, a possibility that puts into question any objective, calculative knowledge that we have, and also at the same time puts to shame our very own reason. It is also on this basis that we need to understand why not somewhere out there when it was a holy night, silent night, um, somebody was born and it was there in a stable where nobody dared to go that he chose to come. It is in this logic that we understand too where we position ourselves. This incarnate Christ that we try to reduce as an object of cognition is actually a person we better relate to than we better deal with as an object of For to reduce him as an object of thought is to reduce him into conflicting rationalities, incoherences, which, which actually make sense to some, but which actually disturbs us all the more. And it is this disturbance that he really came here for. To disturb us just when we are already comfortable or uncomfortable with our own bodies. That he really came to share our stench, our smell, our struggles, and to show us that this God, in blessed days, in his simplicity, chose to be like one. And it has changed our humanity for them. Thank you. Thank you so much. I invite the speakers to step outside, please, and uh, the audience will be given 10 minutes to deliberate, uh, decide uh, which argument you find more convincing, and then uh, sit here if you think that Dr. Kalan's arguments are more convincing, if you think he, he won the debate, sit here if you think uh, Dr. Bakin uh, think that they won, uh, if you think Dr. Bakin won the debate. All right. Thank you guys.
So, first of all, I'd like to read this Certificate of Appreciation awarded to Dr. Mark Joseph Calano, PhD, for his outstanding contribution as a speaker debater during the philosophy of Christmas on the day of the Mystery of the Christ, given his 20th day of December, 28th in the Dutch Women's Seminary, College of Philosophy, Merville Park, Parajaki City, Philippines, signed by President of the Philosophical Association of the Philippines, J.J. Wakil. So, I'll let you know.
Congress sa kanyang hindi rin. So, I hope you continue supporting events like this, which are actually very interesting and very informative. I hope it's good. You mentioned that. Hindi na ako mag-electron kasi. Pero magkaklari pa ako.
on Christian philosophy, which is hosted by the Vocational Seminary in Cebu. So, we hope na makapunta kayo. Maganda ron, marami mga 500 yata ang tao. So, again, salamat. And we hope na nag-enjoy it. So we have a lot of events in store for you for next year. So in yes, as I said, in the Christian Ethics uh, Religion Seminary, we're joining that. February, we have the uh, Philippine National Philosophical Research uh, Society. They'll have a conference of Baguio, in Singapore, Baguio, St. Louis University, February 5 to 7. We have an open mic. Philosopher's Life of the Vinaman sa Mabuhay Temple sa Maytaf Avenue na sa Alameda. If you're interested, uh, February 20, Vinaman siya. Where we'll be having a philosophy in the occult. So if you're interested in new age stuff by March, magkakamagahan kami ng call for that. Ah, uh, gano'n, 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 gano'n. May, sa May, uh, Philosophy of History sa April naman. We will have Lele Claudio, if you're familiar with our campfire, we'll have Masa Garamit Shalami, as a speaker doon. Tapos meron din kami philosophy and Easter, debate din, it's time sa nawak naman, na we will be acting in, you know. Tapos by May, June, we will have the first union summit of all the societies of philosophy in the Philippines, in Sinemang University. That's May 30 to June 1. Then, if you want to go to Bangkok, where we'll be having a first joint society session with the Philosophy and Religion Society of Thailand, and we'll be having that by mid July. So, we'll be posting all these concepts on our FB page and the field Thanks very much. Okay, so that ends our meeting today. Uh, thank you once again for coming and we hope to see you in your future events. May the incarnate Christ bless you, whether it's philosophical or something. <laughs>